Hi, I'm Nathan from Py3G and today I'm going to show you how you can build an AI yourself. This is going to be a brief introduction to the topic and we will even have a fully functional example in the end which can classify different clothing items. I have created a Google Collab notebook, so all you need to follow this example is a Google account. Click on the link in the top right corner or in the video description to get started. If you have never worked with Google Collab before, it is a way to execute Python code on the browser, so you don't need to install anything on your computer. Before we start with the example, let's have a look on what AI actually means. AI stands for Artificial Intelligence and it's a field of science that researches how to teach a computer or machine human behavior or human tasks. Some fields of AI are natural language processing, computer vision or robotics, just to name a few. Another important field of AI is machine learning, which is a collection of algorithms that allow a computer to learn by looking at lots of training data. Those algorithms can be categorized in unsupervised learning, reinforcement learning and supervised learning. In unsupervised learning the data is not labeled. In supervised learning the data is labeled. In reinforcement learning, a virtual agent is given a reward whenever it does the correct thing to encourage the desired behavior of the program. One technique of supervised learning is called deep learning. Deep learning algorithms utilize a network of neurons. Each neuron stores a value and is connected to other neurons in the network with an adjustable weight. Each layer of neurons also has a bias. To calculate the value of neuron 2 from the value of neuron 1, the weight and the bias, you just have to multiply the value of neuron 1 by its weight and then add the bias. In a neural network, the neurons are stacked in layers and each neuron of a layer is connected by weights to each neuron of the previous layer. The training data is written into the input layer, then it gets propagated through a variable amount of hidden layers and finally it reaches the output layer where a prediction is made. Then all the weights and biases of the network get adjusted in a process called backpropagation. This is how the network gets trained. Our goal is to teach a computer to recognize different clothing items. We are going to use a machine learning technique called deep learning. When you open the Collab notebook, you can see a lot of cells that either contain text or Python code. You can execute the cells one by one and have a look at their output. The first thing that we have to do is to import the TensorFlow Python library by Google. This library contains all the tools that we need for our AI. In the second block we import NumPy, TensorFlow Keras and matplotlib pyplot. NumPy is responsible for some mathematics. The Keras module contains the dataset and we will use it to build and train the model. Finally, the pyplot library will be used to display the images in the dataset. We will work on the Fashion MNIST dataset, which contains 70,000 images which have a resolution of 28 by 28 and are labeled 0 through 9. The text block contains a list of the meanings of each label number. We import the Fashion MNIST dataset and split it up into training and testing data. This is common practice and is done so that you can test your model on some data that the model has never seen before. Usually two thirds of the data are used for training and the remaining third is used for testing. Execute the code block to see what the first image of the training data looks like. Before training we normalize the data. This will increase training speed and the accuracy of the final result. Now it is time to build our model. You can see that our model consists of three layers. The first layer is a flatten layer. It will take the 28 by 28 input square and stretch it out into a one-dimensional arrow. So we have one input for each pixel of the image. The second layer is a dense layer. It consists of 200 neurons and each of those neurons is connected to all neurons of the previous layer. The second parameter is the activation function which determines a kind of threshold for the data propagation. The output layer is a dense layer with 10 neurons. Each neuron represents one of the possible classes. As activation function we are going to use softmax. 
Then the model is compiled and we are going to track the accuracy metric. The next block is where the magic happens. We provide the training data and training labels to our model and the model will go over the data 20 times. The training process will take about 2 minutes and you can see that the accuracy is increasing with each epoch. Keep in mind that the accuracy is in relation to the training data which the model has already seen. So for some real world data the accuracy might be lower. Once the training is done, we can test our model with the evaluate function. The model will try to predict the labels of our testing data and we will see how well it performed. For me, the final accuracy is about 89%, but this can be different whenever you retrain the model. Now it is time to look at some predictions. We will let our model predict the first 10 images in our testing data. As you can see, it got 9 out of 10 images right. You can use the last block to check out the images in our testing data. For example, if we want to have a look at the fourth image, we have to set ID to 3, since this is how array indexing works. And we can see that the fourth image displays some trousers just like the model predicted. Let's check out the fifth image and why our model got confused there. The fifth image is an image of a pullover which is fairly similar to a t-shirt, so you can see why our model got confused there. So that wraps it up for today. Let me know if you enjoyed the video and leave a like if you did. Also subscribe to our channel and make sure to hit the bell icon if you want to learn more about the Raspberry Pi.